Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to take a look at a bunch of calculations that are all related to the calculation for pH. Our objectives are to calculate the hydrogen ion uh, and hydroxide ion concentrations in solutions of acids and bases, to calculate the pH, and to explain how pH describes the acidity of a solution. When we're calculating pH, we're actually using a mathematical operator, p. You can take p of anything. Uh, p simply means that you take the negative log of the value. So pH means minus the log of the hydrogen ion concentration. pOH means minus the log of the hydroxide ion concentration. pKW means minus the log of KW. Um, in the next chapter, we're going to be looking at pKA and pKB, where KA and KB are acid and base equilibrium constants. So we can take um, P of anything by taking the minus log. I want to just show you the relationship here between pH, pOH, and kW. Um, I like this because I really like math and I like seeing where equations come from. If you aren't really into math, you can kind of tune out for a moment, but tune back in for the conclusion at the end of this slide. So I want to start with our basic definition of kW. Hydrogen ion concentration times hydroxide ion concentration is equal to kW. All right, I want to take minus the log of both sides of this. It is a property of logs that if you have the log of a product, it's equal to the sum of the logs of the things that you were multiplying. So I can separate that out to minus the log of H plus minus the log of OH minus, and that's all equal to minus the log of KW. Well, minus the log of H plus is pH, minus the log of OH minus is pOH. And so I've got pH plus pOH um, in place of KW. I'm substituting in the number. And then we can evaluate that expression. And what we find is that pH plus pOH is equal to the negative of negative 14, or pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So this final equation that we came up with here in blue, and by the way, if you tuned out, this is the conclusion where you need to come back. The pH plus pOH is equal to 14. That equation, even though it looks really, really different, is just saying the exact same thing as our kW expression, that H plus times OH minus is equal to kW. Now, this slide puts in one place all of these equations about pH and pOH. The top pairs of equations are paired up uh, with pH equals minus the log of hydrogen ion and pOH is minus the log of hydroxide, as well as hydrogen ion is 10 to the minus pH and hydroxide ion is 10 to the minus pOH. Down at the bottom, we have the two equations that are paired up because they're just two different ways of saying the same thing. pH plus pOH equals 14, and hydrogen times hydroxide is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, these are equations that we are going to use over and over and over again, and I'm not going to give them to you on a formula sheet. So you've got to be sure to remember these equations. Don't forget these equations. Now, by the time you've worked a few problems, just like learning that kW is 1 times 10 to the minus 14, these are probably just going to sink in anyway. But if you struggle with memorizing things, you probably should put a little effort um, into making sure you have all of these equations down. This slide is something that you'll probably want to keep handy when you first start doing these calculations to go from a pH to a pOH or from a hydrogen ion concentration to a pOH and those sorts of things. This is just a map of how you get from one place to another. So for instance, if you are given hydrogen ion concentration, and let's see that one's right here, and you're asked to find pOH, this map is telling you you're going to have to do two calculations. One thing that you could do 
is to go along the top, which means you're going to say pH is minus the log of H plus and get to the pH, and then go down the side, which is where you use pH plus pOH equals 14. That's actually probably how I would do this particular problem. But the other way you could go is to use the hydrogen ion concentration to calculate your hydroxide ion concentration, and then use the hydroxide ion is uh, 10 to the minus pOH, or you'd probably rearrange that, that pOH is minus the log of hydroxide. So some of these conversions, like from hydrogen ion to pOH, are going to be two steps, but other conversions will just be one step. Like if I gave you hydrogen ion and asked for pH, that would just be one step. What is the, the pH of a solution which has a concentration of hydroxide ion equal to 8.9 times 10 to the negative 9? All right, so here we have a hydroxide ion uh, concentration. We're trying to find pH. So we've got this one, and we're trying to get to this one. If you look at the, the equation map on the previous sheet, I think you'll find that these are on opposite corners of the map, which means we're going to need two steps to go from one to the next. Um, I think the way I would probably approach this is to calculate pOH first and then use pH plus pOH equals 14. So let's find pOH. That's going to be minus the log of 8.9 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay, our molarity has two sig figs, so our pH will have two decimal places. So 8.9 times 10 to the negative 9. I'm going to take the log of that and change the sign. That gives me 8.05, going to those two decimal places. Now, pH will be equal to 14 minus pOH, because our equation connecting pH and pOH is that they add up to give us 14. So this will be 14 minus 8.05. And if I run that through my calculator, I'm getting 5.95. Here's another um, question um, similar to one that we did at the very end of a previous segment where I asked you to um, rank a bunch of compounds in terms of the hydroxide ion concentration. The lowest concentration was in the weak base, and then we had the intermediate concentration in the group one strong base and the highest concentration in the group two strong base. Um, this time around, instead of asking about hydroxide concentration, I'm asking lowest pH to highest pH, and the molarity of all these solutions is the same, 0.1 molar. Just glancing through the compounds, I notice here that I've got one that's neutral, and I have some that are acids and some that are bases. So um, let's mark water as being neutral, and now let's take a look at all of these other compounds, and let's see if we can mark them as acids, bases, are they strong, are they weak? And keep in mind that when we're on the pH scale, low pH means that the solution is very acidic, and high pH, numbers like 13, 14, mean that the solution is very basic. So if we're going to rank from low pH to high pH, we're going from very acidic through less acidic, through neutral, through uh, slightly basic, through very basic. So we need to look, since these are all 0.1 molar solutions, which ones are strong, which ones are weak. Um, let's kind of separate these out here. So ammonia that is going to be a weak base. So it will have less hydroxide ion than a strong base, so it'll have a lower pH than a strong base. Um, BaOH2 is going to be a strong base, 
and notice that it does have this uh, 2, so it's going to be, a, I'm just going to mark this as strong base times 2. We're going to get two hydroxides, um, which means that it'll be more basic, have a higher pH than a um, base, a strong base that only gives us one hydroxide. HCl is an acid. And if you look at that list of strong acids, it is on that list, so it will be a strong acid. NaOH is a base, and it is a strong base, but we're only going to get one hydroxide ion out of it, so it won't have as much hydroxide as barium hydroxide. Um, so barium will have a higher pH, uh, strong, uh, sodium hydroxide will be a little bit lower. And then last but not least, we have HF. If you look at our list of, of strong acids, HF is not on it. It's the only hydrohalogen acid that's not. And so this one is actually a weak acid. So if we're going to rank these um, from lowest pH to highest pH, the lowest pH would be our strongest acid. That'll give us the most hydrogen ion. So HCl would be the lowest pH. Um, and then next we're going to have our weak acid because we aren't going to get as much hydrogen ion from it, so the pH will be a little bit higher. And that knocks out all of our acid compounds. Um, so water will be next since it is neutral. Next we'd want to look for weak bases, and we have one of those that is ammonia. So I'm going to cross out water and ammonia, and then that leaves our two strong bases. We're going to have a lower pH from sodium hydroxide since we only get one hydroxide from it, and then the highest pH will come from barium hydroxide, giving us those two OH ions. Our objectives for this segment were to look at all calculations related to pH, pOH, hydrogen ion, and hydroxide ions.